Good evening. My name is Sharon Huffman. I'm a member here at House of Prayer Church. The month of November, we're going to be focusing on family. So you will get to see different aspects of the family. And I get the privilege of speaking to you about motherhood, grandmotherhood. Uh, and uh, I consider it to have been a total privilege to have raised five children and I have 12 grandchildren and uh, a 13th on the way. <clears throat> and uh, without a strong knowledge of who God is, without a close walk with him, I believe things wouldn't have gone as smoothly as they did, even though I had hiccups along the way. The biggest thing is doing the best you can in each moment. And uh, like Pastor John has spoken to us about responding and reacting, and the biggest thing is to respond in the way God would want you to respond. And I've had many opportunities, like, like we all know with children and uh, that you get a lot of those kind of opportunities. I homeschooled all my children, so and I was a stay-at-home mom most of the time. And uh, so when you homeschool, you really get to know who your children are. And you raise them all the same, but each one has their particular personality. And so it's learning personalities and, uh, you know, helping them along the way. Each one of my, my, all my children were raised in the church. And, uh, but at one point, my boys veered off. And I always have stood on that scripture, Proverbs 22, 6, where it says to train up a child in the way they should go. And even when they get old, they won't depart from it. So I have stood on that even through my boys having veered away. Um, my one son, my my youngest son, um, he died in 2013. So that was a real, a real curveball. But you know, you know what you're made of when you go through a situation like that. You know, if you've hidden the word in your heart, that's what will come out. And um, God took me, just walked us through that. Uh, with my girl, the boys were the oldest, and my girls are all the youngest. And when I'm talking to them on the phone now, I see that I have made clones because they, they, they say the same things I do. They react the same way. So it's been, that's been really is interesting. Um, well, a big thing that I really like to do, and I still like to do it with my grandchildren, is I like to walk a track. And for each lap that I take, I pray for one person. So that means I have to walk like four miles, you know, around the track to reach, to get all my uh, children and grandchildren in there. But uh, it is such a sweet time to bathe them in prayer, which is the biggest thing you can do as a parent is to bathe your children in, pr in prayer. And another thing that I really find important is waking up or getting the day, my day started before my children did, because if I was behind them, I would lose my day. But if I came prepared into that day and stayed ahead, one step ahead of them, I, I had a good day. With my grandchildren, it's a whole different a relationship with a grandchild is so completely different from your child. As a, as a mother, you're, you're concentrating on teaching them, guiding them, saying yes, saying no, you know, that kind of thing. But with a grandchild, it's completely different. You aren't the one training them. You aren't the one uh, having to say the yeses and the nos. But I find it important for a grandparent to step back and just support the parent not to, um, you can't get in between the parent and the child. You have to back them up. I, I'm blessed with having children that listen to me. They take my advice. They call me. They ask me, what do I do here? What do I do there? You know, they're, they're very, I get to be a part of their family all the time. And um, uh, my oldest son has four children. 
and he's raising them on his own. So bless his heart, I get to really um, help him a lot. And uh, some of my, one of my daughters, I get to be a total part of her life and her children because um, she lives here in town. Uh, I, I'm just totally blessed at being able to be a part. There's a fine line, though, of because your grandchildren are so different, there's such a fine line of crossing crossing over that line and being too permissive, being too loving. But the one thing that I have always strived for with my grandchildren is to be an open door for them if they are at odds with their parents or if their relationship, you know, isn't quite right with their parents. At least my door is open and I can communicate with them. And that's where I have to watch not crossing the line because I tend, you know, for me, my grandchildren are perfect. You know, they are just absolutely wonderful. So I have to watch it that I don't, I don't um, go with whatever they want, you know. Um, I've had opportunities to uh, have them live with me, and that was um, a real learning curve for me to help my daughter with um, her children. And um, I have always thought that it, it was a blessing. It's something that I have cherished. And I hope that each one of, of anybody that is going through that stage in their life of being a grandparent or a mother that you would cling to the word. The word is what will take you through raising your children at a young age, at adolescence, which is difficult, but the word will get you through it. Clinging to that word, having time with the Lord, and knowing who you are in him, knowing your authority in him, and being able to apply that to your family and... Um, putting on the armor of God every morning and recognizing the tactics that the enemy will use against each individual person in your family, each individual, each individual child, because their personalities are so different, each one is going to be attacked in a different way. So being able to know your children and um, your grandchildren and be able to really hone in on your prayers for them it's the biggest thing you can do for your grandchildren or your children. It's the biggest thing you can do to bathe them in prayer, to stand in the gap. Go to your war room. Stand in the gap for them. Don't slack off. Don't, don't sleep. You know, don't let laziness creep in there and um, take that away from you because that's, that's the biggest thing you can do for them, to stand with them and... Uh, there's so many things coming against our children nowadays. It's so completely different from when I was growing up that, that uh, it, it's vital that we stand for them, we stand in the gap. Even when they don't know the Lord, even when they're walking away and they're completely in the world, um, you see things, you get disappointed, you, you ache for them because you know they're walking down the wrong way. But God is greater than that. He's greater than those symptoms that we see coming from our children. I've seen, um, I had to use tough love and um, actually allow my boys to be arrested and be in, in jail. And it had to happen. And, um, but it stopped at that point when I, when I used tough love and it stopped. That wheel stopped spinning because they were going down a wrong road. And um, uh, so prayer is vital. Walking with the Lord is vital. Having a quiet time with him. Getting away into your quiet space and or doing the track like I do. Walking on the track and praying uh, each, each lap, you know. And uh, I can't stress that enough to be praying for your children, your grandchildren. It may seem dark at some times, but 
God is greater, and he has taken me through sicknesses, illnesses, disappointments, bad things with my kids, just, you know, and I can be a bear with my kids, you know, uh, you attack my kids and, I, and my claws come out, you know, but uh, bringing it back down to the Lord as far as only God can walk you through uh, the, the growing up of your children. Um, the word also says to not provoke your children and uh, that is a biggie. You know, we can get on a, a tangent of it has to be this way, no other way. And you can push your kids away where, you know, if you insist on, insist on having your way about things in the house or whatever in their life, you can push them away. You can provoke them. And um, so there's always that not compromising but working with them being willing to listen to them. I have one uh, grandchild that is, um, has autism, slight autism, and being able to listen to him and not insist on my way, but listen to him, read his body language, read him, uh, it has made it so that I get to communicate with him about things that nobody else can. So... Um, not provoking your children, uh, just walking them through their, their life, walking them through their disappointments and stuff. Um, you can't do it without the Lord. You can't do it without uh, a strong um, foundation in the Lord. So that is um, just a brief bit of my thoughts um, the, it's such a broad topic, and um, uh, that's just a, a skim over, but um, I speak blessings to you in your walk with your children and your grandchildren. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now for all these the listeners that are listening to this and watching this, Father, that you would open their eyes to how they need to walk through life with their children. Lord, that you would be there with them, that you would guide them, Father, that they would have the wisdom of Solomon, that they would have your wisdom, Father, that they would have your the mind of Christ, Father, in this. Uh, it's such a privilege to raise children, to create uh, well-balanced adults, Father. So, Lord, I just pray right now for anybody that is going through a hard time, Father, that is struggling with anything, Father, that I speak peace to them now, Father, in Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father, for all the grandparents out there, the privilege of being a grandparent, Father. I just ask that you would help them know how to be uh, a support for their children, for their grandchildren. In Jesus' name, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.